All right, so most of you learned the Kenya knot system in school. Some of you didn't. Uh, maybe some of you would be surprised to know that most Americans have never, ever heard of KK. Never. So when you have a foreign teacher who's fresh off the boat and you say, uh, how do you write that in KK symbols, they will just look at you. And then you'll show them, and then they won't know what you're talking about. Because usually the only people who learn the IPA, we don't call it KK. KK has their own special set that is a subset of the IPA symbols, International Phonetic Alph Alphabet. He has his own version. For example, I told you about O. It's a diphthong, but he represents it as just a single O. Some people don't make it a diphthong. I do. Most people I hear do. However, some people don't. And to my very uh, prejudiced ears, it sounds uneducated to me, less educated. So usually people who talk different from the way we talk will say, oh, that sounds uneducated, and I'm no different. On the other hand, prestigious dialects are still prestigious. I hear British English, and I think that sounds really good. On the other hand of that, I have a British friend who I've listened to now for over 10 years, and now British English sounds very ordinary to me because I listen to him talk all the time. And it no longer sounds so special and so prestigious. It just sounds like the way one of my friends talks. All right, we're going to talk about some of the choices that Kenyon and Knott made when they were designing their particular subset of IPA symbols for American English. Is everybody following me? Everybody understand what I'm saying? OK, good. So it says here that at least up until recently, the Kenyon and Knott phonetic symbols were widely taught to Taiwan, in Taiwan schools to indicate how to pronounce an English word, knowing KK is a definite advantage. This topic has been debated a lot in education circles in Taiwan. Is that not, has not, hasn't there been a lot of discussion about whether it's good to teach KK or not? Is that right? There's been a lot of discussion and a lot of debate on whether it's a good idea to teach KK. I understand now that they're not really teaching it anymore. Some are, but mostly teachers are not teaching KK. Is that true? Or are you not sure? Not sure. OK. Well, what I've heard is that very often KK is not taught at all. Some, people, some teachers maybe still do teach it just because they have for so long, and they think it will give their students a competitive advantage, whatever. It's not a given that you will learn KK in Taiwan anymore. But it's an advantage because the system is a subset of the IPA. Subset means one part of it, one small part of it. The International Phonetic Association, International Phonetic Alphabet. IPA means both those things. Keep that in mind. IPA means two different things. It can mean the association. It also means the alphabet. And you call it, in Chinese, guo ji yin biao. You also have another expression for this. You call it wan guo yin biao. Have you heard of that? Yes or no? Yes. yes. What is wan guo yin biao? All right, the way it works, the way I understand, is before 1960-something, you didn't use the KK symbols, and the kind of English you taught was based on what dialect of English? Before the mid-1960s, what kind of English did they use to teach in Taiwan? Do you know? There's only two really big players. The two big players are? A British English and American English. And I have a British friend, so of course, you know, he considers his the first choice and the standard. And in a way, we Americans accept that because English came from England. We sound silly if we try to talk like them, just like you, if you try to talk Beijinghua to your friends, what would they think? <laughs> sound pretty silly. So if any of us try to affect an English accent, we also sound ridiculous. But we do admire a beautiful British accent. It's standard, it's prestigious. Well, anyway, before the mid-1960s in Taiwan, they taught what was called what? They call it Wan Guo Yin Biao, and they called it DJ. So in contrast to KK, it was called DJ. DJ stands for Daniel Jones, and he was one of the pioneers of modern phonetics 
in England. And in his system, which represented standard British English of the time, that's the English of southern England, he had a convention which was to, okay, we'll try this pen. For example, for this symbol in KK is what? Ooh, right. But in the DJ system, this would be U uh, and this would be U. Uh. Actually, the length mark should be two triangles pointing different ways. That's the original symbol for length. 就是加长,这个音要加长,使用这个符号. And then we simplify it like this when we're writing because it's just too much trouble to draw and fill in two triangles. So he would take, he used a smaller number of, number of symbols and he used a diacritic. A diacritic is a额外的一个符号. We're going to learn about this later in our textbook. Diacritic, or we call it also a diacritical mark. So this was the former DJ system, is what you called it. And DJ stands for Daniel Jones. And we'll read about him in our textbook as well. And the system that he used in Chinese was called Wan Guo Yin Biao. But Wan Guo just means all the countries, right? So it's, it really means the same as Guo Ji Yin Biao. But even though it means the same thing semantically, Guo Ji Yin Biao came to mean IPA. Wan Guo Yin Biao, I believe, this is my understanding, referred to this so-called DJ system where he used length marks instead of different symbol to show the difference between short and long vowels. Okay, everybody understand? Following what I'm saying. So it wasn't until the mid-60s that the government decided to switch the standard for teaching English in Taiwan to what? To KK to American English. Now there's some things about KK that I personally think are weird because I am used to standard IPA usage. And by the way, IPA was not completely standardized until somewhat recently. Different people had different symbols they were using, but there is, as you see here, an International Phonetic Association. They have meetings and they set standards. They say, here is the list of symbols that we all agree on. So as for now, IPA is basically standardized all over the world. Since we're on this topic, I'll mention another thing that you should know. If you ever use TESOL books or Introduction to Linguistic books, that were published in America, sometimes you find a weird looking system of pronunciation symbols. Is that right? Who has had yugai? All right, a lot of you have had yugai. In the chapters on phonetics and phonology, did you see some funny spellings in the imbiao? For example, instead of, instead of writing uh, I, for this diphthong, I, as in sky, they might write this, A-Y. All right, if you haven't run into it yet, you probably will in the future if you use any books that were published in the U.S. This is part of what is called the Americanist system. Now, when you are very powerful, do you have to do what everybody else tells you to do? What can you do? You can do whatever you want, and then the other people often have to say, well, go ahead, if you really want to do it, nothing I can do about it. So that is why there's a lot of strange things about the U.S. that are different from the entire world. For example, we still use feet and inches. We still use Fahrenheit. Is that weird? We still say, what? We still say soccer instead of football. Those are examples of things that are done in America simply because America is so powerful, it's very insular. We can say what we want because we're strong. And you can ignore us or you can do whatever you want. We're just going to do it this way. So when you find books about phonetics that were published in the U.S., not so much phonetics like we're doing, but more TESOL books, books that teach you about how to teach English as a second language or a foreign language. They will often use the Americanist system, which is different from what we're used to, so be ready for that. 
So I personally don't like it, again, because I am very stuck on the IPA. Anyway, be aware there will be differences. Now, these are just four differences between KK and the IPA, the bigger, more standard version uh, of phonetic symbols. So, um, if you don't know KK, you will need to learn IPA from scratch for this class, which shouldn't be too difficult, but it will take some practice. I know a few of you said that you don't know IPA, we're going to learn it in this class then. But you have to do it mostly yourself, because most people already know most of the symbols. So if you already know KK, you need to pay a special attention to these symbols. We're going to transcribe them differently. I've already mentioned it. A single letter O, we're now going to write O with a short U after it for O. O, O, the O. And this is important. It isn't just notation. I heard some people say, and I haven't really confirmed it, that Kenyon and Knott themselves didn't have this distinction. At least I know that they said. They believed that the two sounds, the two sounds O and A, they believed were less diphthongal than the other ones, like oi and ow. Tajura oi and ow, those are really clear diphthongs. But as for O and A, they thought, so they chose to write them with a single letter. What has happened? What is one of the worst vowel problems in Taiwan English, former students? What's your? Right. How do they mostly say it in Taiwan? Nim. Right? Most people say, what's your nim? Or what's your nam? And I think part of the problem is because in KK, we write just an E. And in some systems, E is pronounced eh. So starting from teachers going back many, many years using KK, looking at this symbol, a lot of people think it's eh. But it's not eh. How do we write eh? We call it epsilon. In Chinese, you call it a backwards three. Is that right, Dao San? It's a handy name. So the backwards three is eh, just like zi jie de jie eh. But in KK, the single E is actually a diphthong. And because it's a diphthong, in IPA, we're going to write it with two symbols. Okay, this is true of both O and A. And it's not only what's your nem is a problem in Taiwan, but people will also say no. Are you coming? No. And it should be no. No. So the problem applies also to O. A lot of people <coughs> treat it as though it's a or it's a monophthong, damu in. So these two differences are important to me because I think they'll remind you of some weaknesses in Taiwan English. So first of all, KK, O is written O, it's a diphthong, two vowels put together in one syllable. So it's two vowels pronounced quickly, one after the other, within the same syllable. That's a diphthong. Okay, it will be in the test. So similarly, A is written E plus a short I. To me, it almost sounds like a Yodian, the E, A, E, but that's a little too exaggerated. It's not really I and it's not really E, somewhere in between. So pay attention. Very often the symbols we use to write diphthongs do not exist as single sounds. So, And in addition, you know that for, for this diphthong and for this diphthong, we use a different A than we use for the sound ah. Is that right? For father, we write this. For out, we write this. And for light, we write this. Is that right? I know a lot of people have asked me, why do we use a different A for these two different usages? The reason is because 出现在刷母音的时候,那个单母音的音 so we don't, this is father, we don't say out, out, or lie. 
That's why we use different symbols. Okay, so keep in mind, 只要是刷母音的时候，用的是单母音的符号，可是实际上那个发音，刷母音里面的那个发音，跟它单母音的时候是不一样的。Is that all clear? 可以吗 ？All right. Third, and this one has changed from addition to addition in Latifoget. 我们的课本里面，它大部分是倒过来的 r， 倒过来的小写的 r。是美式跟英式的儿儿，很接近中文的儿子的儿 ，right？ 一二，很接近。Now this is a little funny because Latifoget tells us that 儿在世界的语言里面是蛮罕见的一个音。It's not a very common sound. What is a more common kind of R? Do you think? 世界的语言来说。Think of some languages that you have learned, European ones especially. What's a more likely version of er? Do you think in in any given language? 随便抽个语言，它如果有 r 的话，它多半是什么样的一个 r? Pardon? And that's what we use in French. It's not that common. The French version is not that common. Cause it's got the one, got the one, got the one, got the one, got the one. Actually, the most common sound for R is a tap or a trill, or the r, or the r. It's the most common. The r or the r. Just like Spanish. If you have had Spanish, then you know. So normally, an R, if it exists in a language, it's very likely to be tap, like in English, water. 或者一个 trill, okay. So, because the American style R or British actually too as well is not really that common in the languages of the world. 少见的一个符号，我们会用一个比较有变化的符号。最单纯没有变化的就是按照字母原来的那个符号的，它会代表比较多出现的那种 R。那也就是 trill， 或者 tap。那一个普通的 r， 那个就是 r， 西班牙文 rojo， 红色。Okay， that's why we turn it around for the American r. It's not that common. The funny thing is though that languages that I personally have studied or learned or happen to know, I grew up with American English and I have really clear r's. I learned Mandarin. And the first Mandarin I learned was Beijing Mandarin, and 儿子来玩儿那个儿也很清楚，也是类似这种 R. And the other R that I've had experience with is with Dutch in Leiden. Okay, 我的那个博士在莱顿念的 And their dialect of Dutch also has this R. When I was in Leiden and I was in a bookstore, I was listening to a local woman talk, and I thought, is she making fun of my accent, of an American accent, or something? 他的那个荷兰文一直有喔喔喔的声音，我奇怪，原来那是莱顿当地的腔，而且被人家听听成是蛮土的。Yeah, so three languages that I have a connection with: American English, Mandarin, and Leiden Dutch. 都有 r 这个音，虽然在世界语言里面算比较罕见的。All right, all of that explanation tells you that this is a trill. 普通的 r 是 r。倒过来的 r 才是美式的 r, so that's the third change we need to watch out for. The the fourth point is that we have a tap in English. If a t comes between two vowels, it very often is pronounced as a d sound, a short d. So we don't say water usually, although some people say water, water. 这个还蛮多的 The usual pronunciation is water. 舌尖会顶一下，点一下，马上就抽走。Water, 那个叫 tap, and it has a special symbol. It's written like a cane. You can see it right there. 这是往右的，很像是一个拐杖啊，没有那么高。This is called a tap. In printing, it will have 下面有一横。Okay, it has sometimes one, sometimes no, it's okay. So I think, or in writing actually, it's in writing. We usually put a line at the bottom. Printing is not very good, I just said it. Okay, so that's called a tap. And we're going to be using this for 
transcriptions, and they're for narrow transcriptions. Like I 还没有讲，后面会介绍。如果我们的那个听写写的比较细的时候，英文的那个 water 中间那个 t 变成这个音啊，变成的那个音是 tap。我们用这个符号，我们会加这个符号。我们也可以用 t， 可是 t 不是真的念作 t，t 是 t 的某一种一个变体啊，就是这个 tap。OK， so those are the main differences we need to be aware of when you're taking. Uh, when you're doing dictation or uh, other work. Okay, and that's it. I think we're going to turn this off and go to our textbook now. Anybody have any questions? All right, we're going to continue reading now, and we're at the bottom of page seven. And whose turn? Okay, good. Alice, go. It is not very loud, so the pressure fluctuation is not much different from zero in comparison with the following vowel, and the variations in air pressure are smaller and more nearly random. All right, now we've had like almost a week. We've had five days since we were last talking about this, and this is kind of out of the blue. Turn over to page eight. Look at the waveform. That's what that's called. It's just a record of frequency and、uh, loudness. Of a speech signal, and they're talking right now about this part at the beginning. That's, and it's not very loud. So just pay attention now to volume. 就注意音量 Listen carefully. How much softer f- is compared to the next vowel? Listen, father, father. 突然间那个啊就很大声了 Is that right? We don't feel it when we're speaking because we're so used to the flow of speech with quiet sounds and loud sounds alternating. But if you think about it, is a very quiet sound. And if you hear it on the phone, you probably cannot tell the difference between and and. They probably sound all about the same in Mandarin as well as in English. Okay, in the on the phone, we are missing a lot of frequencies. They are quite quiet. Is louder and. Are very quiet, so you can see 上下那个幅度是很窄的 Is that right? That shows that it is very quiet, has very low volume. All right.、Um, what else? Keep going.、Mm-hmm. There are no regular pulses before the vocal folds. Are the, not the word after pulses? Pulses? Huh? There are no regular pulses because. The vocal folds are not vibrating. All right, we're going to learn more about this soon, but pay attention now. Compare these two. Now, if you first look at this, all you can think is this looks very scientific and technical. Is that right? It's a 不是外文系的东西 Isn't that your first feeling? Yes or no? Some quietly, shyly said yes. All right. So when you look at something like this, you think 这是不属于外文系的东西，甚至不属于文学院的东西 However, you will quickly be able to get a lot of information from a waveform. First of all, comparing these two, what do we know? Just by looking at how tall the lines are, what do we know? That the first sound is what compared to the second sound? Much. Much what? 第一个音跟这个第二个音跟这个母音来比的话，相差很远，在哪方面？ Loudness is that right? So, 上下这个范围很小很小，那表示说它音量很小。That's the first thing. You can already see. 那突然间那个 vowel 变得很大声。That's one piece of information you can get just by looking at it. So, you now know how to get some very important information from a waveform. 就是知道这么一点点，就会看出很重要的东西。All right. Here's the second very very piece of important piece of information to get from a waveform. Look at the vowel. Do you notice that these long, thin lines are very evenly spaced? You may 发现这些直线一个接一个，间隔很均匀。Is that right? Everyone see that? The reason for that is because all vowels are what? Voiced. That means voiced means the vocal folds are opening and closing very quickly. And very regularly, 很规律的，很均匀的，一开合，一开一合，一开合 
That's voicing. 那个就是发声 voicing， 就是有声。Because ah is voiced, you can see that it has very evenly spaced parallel vertical lines. Right? Now look at the foot part. That's very quiet. Do you see that kind of even spacing among the vertical lines? 有点乱，有没有？好像是蛮随机的。So you can see that is noise, and I need some water. Hang on a second. I'd like you to think about a minute. What is the difference between? Oh, what is the definition of noise? Okay. What do you know about noise? What is the difference between the f and the a, as regards the chaos of the f and the regular spacing of the a? It's because f produces noise. Now, when we say noise, we think of the most popular meaning of how tall. Is that right? Oh, would you please not make so much noise? All right, we're going to learn a technical definition of noise. What is the difference between the pattern of those two waveforms? This one is regular. This one is irregular, right? So, if we have voicing, we usually have the same frequency. For a somewhat long period of time, 至少有一段时间维持同一个频率 That's voicing. But do we have the same frequency with noise? Noise 的特色是一下子很多乱七八糟不同的频率同时出现 That's the difference. We don't have one concentrated single pitch. Ah,、uh, that's a pitch like music. But has many, many, many different frequencies all at the same time. 一团糟，也不能说糟，因为这个 f 其实是一个很正统的一个音。可是就频率来说，是一下子很多很多不同的 frequency. That's noise. Many different frequencies without any special pattern. That's noise. Everybody understand that? That is also important, and that will probably also be on a test. So make sure that you're paying attention and put it in your notes. Okay. So here we have noise, chaotic frequencies. Here we have a voiced sound, which happens to be a vowel, a very loud vowel, with one single fundamental frequency. 它的基频，它基本频率都一样，差不多一样。听起来是很和谐，是有一定的一个音高。All right. So that's another big piece of information. You've already got two big pieces. One is volume. One is Voiceless versus voiced. Okay, good. Let's continue. We will be considering waveforms and their acoustic analysis in more detail later in this book. For the moment, we will simply notice the obvious difference between sounds in which the vocal folds are vibrating. Vibrating. Remember Vib to go up. Continuation、okay. rise. Vibrating, which have. Comparatively large regular pulses of air pressure. All right, pay attention. As I told you, every single sentence in this book is important. Everything has meaning, and I know the difference myself when I'm listening to something that is very dense writing compared to something that is just telling a story and very and is very redundant. You know, three genes I think Darwin, Darwin Origin of Species. It was when I was hiking. Now, when I'm hiking, this is how. I couldn't let my mind wander. If I did, I have to re I'd have to replay it over and over again. 必须要很专心的听每一个字 That's the way it was with Darwin. 那 Darwin 念完了松了一口气 I read a novel by Willa Cather. 看我的 Facebook 的人知道 And it was such relief because my mind didn't wander, but it was a lot easier to understand. It was just so much easier. 你错过一点点的话也还好，不严重 But here, everything will have. Some use to you. So, notice that we have comparative, comparatively large regular pulses. 震动一下，那个叫 pulse. Okay, pulse 不是脉搏吗 Okay, 脉搏也是一震一震的，一拍一拍的，一次一次的啊，一个重复一个动作 So we have large, 比较高 regular 规律的，间隔均匀的，一下一下的。啊、uh, ，这个节拍 of air pressure 是气压造成的。Let's go on. 
and sounds without vocal fold vibration, which have a smaller amplitude and irregular variations in air pressure. Good. Smaller. Smaller. Right. It's not smaller in American English. Some actually on the East Coast make it more small than I do. But like I said, I'd like you to learn one consistent dialect. So everybody just open your mouth and say ah. Now say all. all. Small. small. That's it. That's how I say it. Okay? Small. 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 Smaller. Smaller. And also, I don't say variations. That's okay on the East Coast. I say variations. Can vary. Hunghao then I got very. Yang. Everybody variations. Variations. Okay, smaller amplitude. Repeat. And irregular variations. Irregular variations. Good, not variations, variations. Ver, 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 very. Variations. Okay, everybody, please repeat and then try it again. Irregular variations. Good, all right. As I said, variations is okay, I think, on the East Coast. All right, and then, 最后两个字怎么念? Beautiful. In air pressure. All right. <clears throat> you will hear people not using compound noun stress. I heard it on the radio this morning. I could find the file because it's online if you want to hear it. If you are, for example, a radio announcer, you often don't use that stress because you want to be emphatic. So, if it were on this program, they'd say, Irregular variations in air pressure. Okay, remember I told you when you read like that, you sound very? That's right. Remember that 7 Eleven story. Okay, and that's what they're doing on the radio. They want to be really high. Okay, that's a Chinese word. They want to be really excited sounding to keep people's attention. Okay, next page. <clears throat> I'm Tina. Places of articulatory gestures. Articulatory. Articulatory. Good. The part of the vocal tract that can be used to form sounds are called articulators. All right. We just practiced the words small and all, and call rhymes with those two words. It's the same pronunciation. I've collected, I think I've told you, over 200 recordings of Taiwan English from fairly well educated native speakers of. Mandarin and Minayu. And most of them have trouble with the word call. Some say coal, some say coal. I guess it's supposed to be British. They have a lot of strange pronunciations, but it's a very easy word to say. Please forget however you learned it before and start over. Everybody again, ah. 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 All. Ah. 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 So all you have to do is open your mouth and say ah and add an all. Everybody all. all. Beautiful. Small. Small. Call. Call. All right. Or call or something really strange. Just call. Everybody call. call. Called. Call. Calling. Call. Caller. Call. Calls. Call. 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 All right, remember that. Go ahead. The articulators that form the lower surface of the oh, vocal tract. Can you finish? Mm, to form sounds that are. Are call. call. There, that's better. Yeah. Articulators. Mm -hmm. The articulators. Me? All right, Muin. 一个一个字是母音开头的话,前面的the,理论上概念z,我有这个规则很多人没有, but I would like you to have the habit, to me it sounds better. All right, the articulators? The articulators that form the lower surface of the vocal tract. Surface,那个a要念一个刷, surface,跟服务一样, except for what? The f is voiceless and service it's voice, service, surface. 除了那个v跟f不一样,可以差不多, so surface, don't say surface, it's surface. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the lower surface of the vocal tract are highly mobile. Right, and mobile is American English, and British it's mobile. All right, American is mobile. You did it American, the American way. They made the gestures required for speech by moving towards the articulators that form the upper surface. All right, are you paying attention now? <clears throat> The parts of your vocal tract that you use to make the sounds of language are called what? The parts of your vocal tract, your 声道,用来发语音的那些叫做什么? Articulators, good. Now pay attention to the next sentence. The ones that form the lower surface of the vocal tract are highly mobile. He's talking mainly about what here? Especially the highly mobile, 就是一直在活动,活动力很强. He's talking about the tongue. So when you're reading, I know it's, it's easy to just focus on pronunciation, not really understand. But when that happens, go back and make sure you understand. 下面的,这边的那些发音器官,就是活力特别强. And he's mainly talking about the tongue, but also the jaw. Because everybody watch now, when we talk, we've got two possibilities. right? So, is it the jaw that goes up and down, or the upper part <laughs> of your head? Is that right? So that's what he's saying here. Please try to pay attention. It's hard. It takes a lot of concentration, just like Darwin did when I was on my hike. Okay? So I will give you another word that will save us time later. Another pair of words. Can you think of a good name, a good xinongsi for these articulators? What do we call that? Jiji. Active. These are active articulators. 自己主动去碰触另外或者接近另外一个发音器官 is an active articulator. So you can guess the opposite. This upper part of the head that doesn't move that much when we speak contains a lot of the opposite of this. Passive articulators, active and passive articulators. So when we go slow, sometimes we're actually saving time in the future. So active articulators, passive articulators, okay? Keep going. Try saying the word capital and know the major movement of your tongue and lips. All right, I'm sorry, we need to go slow here because he's now giving you an introduction to the idea of phonetic notation. Now, his example word is capital. Capital. He's going to break it down so you have the idea of being able to write a word in separate symbols because one sound comes after another. And first of all, the tongue what? You will find? Go ahead. Uh, you will find that the... You will what? Found. Huh? You will find. Find. Find, yeah. A lot of you forget the past tense, but some of you put it in where it doesn't belong. You will find. Will home and put high you'll found, right? You will have found your kernel. You will find? You will find find that the back of the tongue moves up to make contact with the roof of the mouth for the first uh, for the first sound. All right. Here's the first sound. The first sound is what? Everybody say the first sound in that word? K, k. All right. Let's feel what our tongue is doing when we make the sound k. What is touching what? What is moving to where? And then what touches what? First of all, what part is moving? The tongue, right? What part of the tongue touches something? The back of the tongue, 舌后, right? In Chinese, we often call it 舌根, but let's get in the habit of saying 舌后. And what does it touch? The soft palate or velum, all right. 
Tell me which is the passive articulator. The soft palate is the passive articulator and the active articulator is the? What part of the tongue? The back of the tongue. When you say tongue, you probably should make it specific because there are so many parts of the tongue doing so many different things. So the back of the tongue is the active articulator. Touches the soft palate, the passive articulator. Good. That's the first sound. And then? And then counts down for the following vowel. It comes down for the following vowel. And that's also important because k. And the next sound is a. Ah. What is touching what when you say a? Ah? For k, it's the back of the tongue and the soft palate. How about for a? Ah? What's touching what? Ka, a, a. What is touching what? That's the correct answer. Nothing is touching anything. What is the difference between consonants and vowels? With vowels, there is some kind of a, an obstruction. That's a vowel. That's the difference. Okay? Um, let's finish. The lips come together in the formation of and then counts apart again in the vowel. Okay, this time I can correct you. First of all, the next sound after k, a, is what? The next sound is? After k, a, next sound is? P, right. Okay, I maybe didn't hear you when you said it, because p is also a very quiet sound. And to make the p, what do we do? What touches what? The lips come together. And then, what happens after that? Cap, what's the next thing we do? Cap, uh, is anything touching anything? No, that's another vowel. So some of them may pull down some more. And that's why we'll find that when we're describing vowels, we're going to use a different method than the method we use to describe consonants. Because when we're describing consonants, it's very easy to say, this thing touches that thing. And when you read it, you can probably produce it. But for a vowel, how do you describe the difference between a and a? So machine The difference between a and a. Huh? Go ahead. There's something going on in the oral tract, the tongue. Yeah. The height of the tongue. That's the main thing. But is that easy to describe? Is it as easy as saying the two lips come together? No. So when we get to vowels, we're going to use a different method for describing them. So right now, we're using an articulatory description. This is very important. Articulatory description is one way. The other way is what? I think this was in our last class. We want to describe the language. The first approach can be. 就是形容哪一些器官接触哪一些器官，对不对 ？That's called the articulatory approach. What's a different way we could use for other sounds? Anybody remember? We spent some time on it in class. We just found that describing vowels by saying what touches what doesn't work very well. It's really hard to describe what's happening. When you're making an a、ah、as opposed to when you're making an u,、uh. so what's the other approach we mentioned in class in the textbook? Letter. The acoustic structure, good. Okay, the acoustic structure, or very simply, what it sounds like. Yong ting de. Instead of saying physically what is touching what, we can describe how it sounds to our ear, and that relates to the acoustic structure. That's correct. Okay, keep going. The tongue tip comes up for the t, and again for most people for the final, for the final l. All right, this is our preliminary description of the sounds in the word capital. So after p, the lips come apart. We have another vowel that's hard to describe. Then the tip of the tongue comes up, and what does it touch? What does it touch? The V, tong V, you have some information. When I say V, that means the next word starts with a. Yeah. So the tip of the tongue touches what? The alveolar ridge, capit. And then 
It comes down again, capital. All right, you might say that the U is a syllabic U, because the one will have a vowel. Capital, you have a schwa. And then U, U. And then the final U, did he describe the L? No, he didn't. And that's because there are two main kinds of L. capital. All right? So he didn't describe that L, and there's a reason for that. So very simply, he's now giving you the idea of we can describe a word by its individual sounds. Each one has a place of articulation, a manner of articulation we'll learn, and we have a symbol for each one because now he's basically getting you ready to learn IPA. Okay, we'll take a break. Do you ever pay attention to those big, big barrels of waste, trash? Or do you I'm just suggesting now that everybody start to think about every single bit of trash you throw away. So I mentioned Ms. Lin Ching, I said, she said, so she said, and that's what I'm doing now. I think she's right. I want you to think about every single piece of trash you throw out. I'm serious now. You don't think about it because you don't have to follow it to how it's going to be taken care of or disposed of. And you look at the lose produced in one day just by our campus and Taida. Do you ever notice the garbage truck? It's full of big, big bags of empty what? and Is that right? Now there's a simple way for you to help lessen the amount of garbage that we produce. This is something I feel strongly about at home. And you notice, I have no I bring my own, my own water bottle. So I strongly recommend step one. A lot of you do it too. Never buy ping昌水. Just bring a thermos. Bring some kind of a water bottle. You will save a lot of plastic poisoning our environment. And instead of bianhe, I know a lot of you, it's really hard. You can't really make your own lunch at home. Maybe you're not living at home, your mother can't make one for you. But what you can do is for some places, Seriously, there are many places on campus where you can wash your plate, your fork, your kuaizi, whatever it is. Right, this is really, really important. That's why I'm taking class time on it. Everybody think about every single piece of trash that you are producing. Try to reduce it one little bit at a time. Start with the water bottle. Very, very seriously, please think about it. Okay? Mm, that's that. We're going to move on. All right, just very quickly. This was an important paragraph, but like I say, they're all important. What did we get out of this paragraph that we just read? We learned two new terms here, articulators. Active and passive, right? Active are mostly upper or lower? Lower, that's right. And we also learned about the difference between vowels and consonants. And which ones are, very, are quite hard to describe just by describing articulations, articulatory organs and what they're doing. Vowels are really hard to describe that way. So when we get to vowels, what method are we going to use? Sound acoustic structure, that's right. So for now, we're sticking with consonants because 
It's easy to use an articulatory description for consonants. Good. Next reader, please. The names of the principal parts of the upper surface of the vocal tract are given in Figure 1.5. Okay, that's good. A few things I'm going to point out, and please take these seriously so I don't have to keep repeating. Number one, N-A-M-E-S, names. Remember underwear, 中文的 内衣叫m. Everyone names. 母音要注意,嗯要注意,后面的s,念s还是z. Z, names, not names. Names. That's the first thing. Second thing. Mm, what did I hear? Parts. Principal parts. That's worth paying attention to. Uh, vocal tract. How do we say F I G U R E? Figure in American. Figure. Figure. Everyone, figure. figure. All right. The other thing was the before a vowel should usually be pronounced. The upper, the upper. Okay, can you just read the sentence again? The Not, oh, that's the other thing. Need a TH, look at my mouth. It's the. 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 So, Daniel Kandal. The. There we go, that's it. The names of the principal. The. Where did you, uh, where are you from? From. Yeah. Taoyuan. From Taoyuan, okay. Um, somewhere you picked up the as the, so you need to pay attention to that. Go on. The names of the principal parts of the upper of, of the upper of upper Oh, the mm -hmm. upper surface of the, the the vocal tract are given in Figure One Point Five. It's tiring. Okay, the last thing. How do you say this number? All right, what do we usually hear in Taiwan? 1.5, 1.5. It sounds very normal, doesn't it? Listen, the way I say it, 1.5. Of course, I'm making it a little clearer than usual, but not, there isn't that big of a difference. 1.5, five, not five. You know what five is? Duan Di, five. Five in bugle core. Okay, and I'm going to jump ahead. Are these vowels the same to your ears? Listen very carefully. But is the vowel quality the same in these two words? Listen carefully. Five. Five. Look at my mouth because it will give you some clues. If you see different movements, then there's probably going to be different sounds. Listen. Five. 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 Are they the same vowel? They're the same phoneme. Okay? If you've had guy, you know what a phoneme is. Same phoneme, but they sound different. Watch and listen again. Five, 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 five. What do you notice about five? The vowel is longer, but anything else? Yeah, my jaw goes much further down. Is that right? Watch again. Five, 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 five. Is that right? So, 还是英语的five有三个问题这么短的字有三个问题 What are they? Number one The f should be a v But very often in conversation it's not clear That doesn't mean you should ignore it But it should be voice, number one It's not five, it's five v. Second difference is Most people in Taiwan don't know that a vowel before a voice sound should be longer 出现在有声的音前面的母音要变长，一般人在台湾不知道。然后呢，他讲的时候就没有差别。So it should not be five, it should be five. 长要不要不要长。The third thing is that 刚好 I 这个双母音有个特色，跟其他的双母音不一样。后面是 voiceless，它一个样子；后面是 voice，它是另外一个音。
后面 voice 的时候，嘴巴开的比较大。Five, five, five, five. So if we want to represent it in IPA, we could do this. Duan Di, we can write it like this. If you can see it, this is Dao V F Dao V E F. Five, ei, ei, five, ei, ei, ei. Not I, it's ei. Five. 然后呢，五这个数字 ，is 这个代表长 ，five。这两个在台湾这个长的念着这个，好像当初是一样的，可是实际上有三个很大的不同的地方。So everybody, let's try it. Five, 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 five. All right. We're going to make a digression. 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 We're 这个现象的名称叫 Canadian raising。为什么呢？加拿大人，这个现象很明显，而且不只是 I 在加拿大，加拿大还有另外一个双母音有一样的现象。Does anybody have a、uh, uh, what's his name? Ted for a teacher? Okay, all right. Where is he from? Canada. He's from Toronto, right? 他有这个现象。So if you listen to his lectures. You will hear his Canadian raising, and I'll explain it in a minute.、Um, and very often, Ted is very surprised to have some students hear him say a certain word, and they start giggling. And then it's because of this class. <laughs> All right.、Uh, we'll just go over this page then. The American tap. Remember, we already talked about the tap earlier, and Canadian raising. So we're going to skip the part about tap right now. Even as a lingwai, a 比较复杂的一个 argument. Let's just go to Canada. All right, Canadian raising. Here's a website with audio samples. In in the United States, we have five five. 这两个不一样。可是加拿大还有另外一个双母音有这个现象。What is it? Ow.、Oh. All right. We don't have raising for ow、oh、in the United States. Most of us don't. But they do in Canada, especially in a place like Toronto. So five five, a pair for ow would be loud, 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 loud. 我不到底，因为我不是加拿大人。But it's a little bit a lot,、uh, a little bit like that. And if you say the phrase, 上面那个标题 I would say about the house. Have Ted say that phrase. He will say about the house, about the house. About the house, 不一样，他一样。后面如果是 voice 的话 ，he has the same vowel I do. Uh, for example, loud, loud. 那一样。后面如果是 voiceless 的话 ，loud, loud 是个很差劲的家伙的意思。L O U T, loud. He doesn't say loud. He says loud, loud. So about the house, about the house. Another where, another place you can hear it really clearly. Does anybody listen to ICRT? Nobody. Okay. If you want to hear it, there's a guy named Terry Engel. Terry Engel is Canadian. He is very obvious. He has this phenomenon. ICRT. Listen to Terry. Actually, he's a good DJ, so you won't waste your time. He's very smart, very clever. All right. He has a boat. The host. This this Indian. Yeah. All right. The funny thing is that I am from Minnesota, very close to Canada, and I never really noticed this. Until I studied phonetics, but now it stands out like a sore thumb. I say, "Oh, you're Canadian, huh?" Anybody who knows this, you will know right away. But not all Canadians have this. It's especially in the eastern part of Canada, around Toronto. If someone is from BC, British Columbia, they probably don't have it. So that's where a lot of Chinese live, like from Hong Kong, Taiwan, elsewhere. So not so much in the western part, but around Toronto in the eastern part, yes. Okay. So that was a lighter note. I thought you might enjoy that. Let's move on.
So in the United States, we only have five, five, but in Canada, they also have loud, loud. For me, it's just loud, loud. All right. Ah, 自己看那页是 Phonetics two, page two. Phonetics two, page two. 自己看 All right. Go.、Mm. The upper lip and the upper teeth, notably the frontal incisors, are familiar enough structures. All right, let's make sure we know what everything is. Where are your incisors? Everybody, show me your incisors. Manya, incisors. Incisors is related to scissors to cut. It cuts your food. Okay. So the upper lip and upper teeth, notably the frontal incisors, are familiar enough structures. These are show. Go on. Just behind the upper teeth is a small pro protuberance. Good, everybody. Protuberance. Protuberance. 就是突出物。突出物 is a protuberance, something that sticks out. Go on. That you can feel with the tip of the tongue. All right. Watch your the. 那个要练你的 the. In addition, watch out for feel. In Taiwan, feel is now a Chinese word. Is that right? 我很喜欢那个。Feel right. Watch out in English. It's feel. feel. A lot of people say feel. That's strong man. Feel. feel. Good. This is called the alveolar ridge. The、uh -huh. the、mm -hmm. alveolar ridge. You can also feel that the front part of the roof of the mouth is formed by a bony structure. This is the hard palate. You will probably have to use a fingertip to feel. Farther back. Farther. Farther yeah, back. Most people cannot curl their tongue up far enough to touch the soft palate or velum. 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 Not ve. V. V. Uh huh. Velum. 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 Right. At the back of the mouth, the soft palate is a muscular flap that can be ra raised to press against the back wall of the pharynx and. Pharynx. Pharynx、mm -hmm. and shut off the nasal tract, preventing air from going out through the nose. In this case, there is said to be a velic closure. Velic, velic. Yeah, velic and velum. All right, I'm not stopping so much here because we all know this now, right? All this stuff is familiar. Ing a、uh, hard palate, further back soft palate, and we can raise and lower the soft palate. There are some muscles in there. If the soft palate is raised, do we have an oral or a nasal sound? Oral, and then to make a nasal sound, we lower the the velum. If it's closed, it's called a velic closure. 那是封封闭了的状态 Okay, 封塞了，闭塞了都可以，我都查过。Go on. This action separates the nasal tract from the oral tract so that the air can go out only through the mouth. At the lower end of the soft palate is a small appendage. Appendage is, 也是一个额外一一一个赘肉或者一个凸出来的东西，也是是附在上面的一个东西。盲肠也是一个 appendage， 就是附加在上面的。Appendage hanging down that is known as the uvula. 嗯嗯，第一堂课都学过了，我是第二堂。Uvula. Let's get those names down, everybody. Uvula. 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 She don't say uvular. Uvula. 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 Make sure you know how to say them all correctly. Go on. The part of the vocal tract between the uvula and the larynx is the pharynx. The back wall of the pharynx may be considered one of the articulators on the. The upper surface of the vocal tract. Okay, beautiful reading except for your th. Th now, 重新练 the, the 跟 the. Everything else is great. So remember, pharynx 是整个那个区域，是咽喉，咽。可是 usually what we're talking about, what we need to talk about in our descriptions, is the 咽壁 the pharyngeal wall, and that's why I introduced that first when we talked about the articulators. Good. Questions. This is all clear. I think we've covered it before. Go on. I'm Ruby. Figure 1.6 shows the lower lip and the specific names for the parts of the tongue that form the lower that, that form、mm -hmm. the lower surface of the vocal tract. The tip and the, the tip and blade of the tongue are the most mobile parts. 
Behind the blade is what is technically called the front of the tongue. Front. Front of the tongue. It is actually the forward part of the body of the tongue and lies underneath the hard palate when the tongue is when the tongue is at rest. Okay, just one second. We know that the tongue is the most lingual organ of the whole body, at least most mean lingual muscle of the whole body, but. The tongue itself has its own hierarchy. What part of the tongue is the most mobile? The tip and blade in the front. So the tongue itself has its own hierarchy. It has its own hierarchy. It has its own hierarchy. Okay. The remainder of the body of the tongue may be divided into the center, which is part center into the center, which is partly beneath the hard palate and partly beneath the soft. Palate. Okay, partly. partly. Partly, yeah. The back, which is beneath the soft palate, and root, which is opposite the back wall of the pharynx. Good. The epiglottis is attached to the lower part of the root of the tongue. Okay, very good. I think we know all this stuff. We can go on. Good. If you don't know it, review it carefully. Okay. I'm Annie. Bearing all these terms in mind, say the word pe peculiar and try to give a rough description of the gestures made by the vocal organs during the consonant sounds. Okay, stop for a minute. Annie, have a cold. Oh, I hope you get well soon. Okay, uh, let's just stop there for a minute. Peculiar. What is the articulatory gesture involved? Two lips come together. Okay, then they go apart for the vowel. We're not going to worry so much about vowels, except for that it will usually say that the articulators come apart. That's usually what we say. And how about the k? What, what happens? Back of the tongue touches the the velum or soft palate. Very good. Peculiar. What's next? What do we do to make that l? The tip of the tongue touches your alveolar ridge. Very good. Lee, we won't worry about it. Er, er, those are all hard. <laughs> Let's see what he says. Because er is like a vowel. That's why it's so hard, at least in American English. One. You shall find that the lips come together for the first sound. Then the back and center of the tongue are raised. But is the con contact on the hard palate or on the villain? For most people, it is centered between the two. All right, now we're getting really detailed. When we say k, we said the back of the tongue touches the velum. But is, is it really touching the hard palate or the velum? Peculiar, peculiar. Everybody say car. Now say q. Did you make the K in the same place in both those words? No. What's the difference? That's right. It's further back for car because A is a back vowel. Car. Everybody, car. car. Q. Q. Q is more front. Is that right? And that's because it's affected by the vowel. E. Q. Okay, go on. Then note the position in the formation of the L. Note well, the what? Um, position. 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 Everyone, position. Position. Very good. Position in the formation of the L. Most people make this sound with the tip of the tongue on the on the alveolar ridge. Mm -hmm. An. 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 Very good. Nice reading. Okay, and get well soon. Now, peculiar. We're not going to go into detail about the two main kinds of L, the clear L and the dark L. But look, listen, love. And in American English, lots of our L's are very dark. 不是只有母音前的，呃，不，不只是母音后的会变成 dark， 像 ball、bill 等等
peculiar， 我也可以，舌尖没有点到 alveolar ridge， 也可以 peculiar， peculiar， 可能根本没有碰到，那是美式的特色，英式不会这样，英式 clear 跟 dark 分得蛮蛮分明，蛮清楚，美式是 clear l， dark l， 几乎都会偏向 dark。So for example， listen play， 我也可以念 listen play， 蛮 dark 的。因为我我自己个人的 L 是蛮 dark 的 ，OK。So at least for Brits, usually the tip of the tongue touches the alveolar ridge. For Americans, yes, but not always. OK. Next. I'm I'm Vivian. Now compare the words true and T. In which word does the tongue tongue movement involve a contact? Tongue movement. Tongue movement. Right. Involve a contact further forward in the mouth. All right. Let's just. Try it ourselves before we read the answer. Everybody say true, true. and then say T. T. Just say it a few times. In which one is the tongue more front? True, T. True, T. Which one? In which one is the tongue more front? For T, and that's because of the vowel E. All right, continue. Most people make contact with the tip or blade of the tongue. Tip, not tip. 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 Uh huh. And on the alveolar ridge, when saying T. Okay, and ridge, not ridge. 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 Good. But slightly farther back in true, try to distinguish the differences in other consonant sounds, such as in other consonant sounds. Consonant sounds such as those in shy and shy. And those at the beginning of t v and t v. All right, we're going to start listening to a lot of details about sounds we didn't notice before. We would think that maybe <coughs> the t is the same no matter what comes after it, but in fact, sounds are very much influenced by what what comes before them and what comes after them. So t true, your tongue goes back a bit. T true for the r in true and the u. And let's compare some other ones. For example, sigh, shy, sigh, shy. What differences do you notice between those two sounds? What parameters can we use? We can use some tianshu to describe the difference. What were some of the parameters we used looking at the waveform? One is loudness, right? Which one is louder? Sh, sh, sh. Which one's louder? Is louder, isn't it? There's another one that's a little more subtle. I'm sure you can hear it once I point it out. Okay, everybody, be quiet. I'm going to say them. I want you to listen for pitch. Now, remember, we said that noise is different in what way from something with voicing or with a pitch. 有固定的音跟 noise 有什么不一样 What is noise? What did we say earlier? It's lots of frequencies all over the place. That's right, isn't that right? All right. So we have many frequencies. Cause the high should be within the fan way. Now see if you can hear a difference in the range of pitches in s and sh. When I say the two words, listen carefully for pitch. Can inga yo ma ta bie? Don't say anything and don't shout out the answer. Just listen carefully now. Sigh, shy, sigh. Shy, s, sh, sh, sh. When I say them individually, I think it's pretty clear. Which one has a higher pitch? Right. So again, which one is louder? Sh. But which one is higher? There we go. Did you ever notice those differences before? Isn't that something? Your ears are going to be opened up to a whole new world that was always there with you, but you never really probably. Pay much attention to. Okay, go on. Next, I'm Bella. Okay. When considering diagrams such as those we have been discussing, it is important to remember that important, important, not important. 后面有个有一个后色音，有个 glottal stop. And I pick on this because it's one of the few problems my son had in his English. 我儿子英文中文讲的几乎是一样好。But this is something that he did funny too. He said basketball important. 然后呢，我会改他，然后他会生气。<laughs> okay, 他现在几乎都改好了。He sounds fine now. But you need to put a glottal stop in there. Important. Important. 
I just finished writing another article in the series that I've also asked you, that I've already asked you to read. 我刚好写完了是有关色音，这个特别的色音不是 T， 是一个喉色音，就是喉咙，你的那个声带会合在一起。Import, import. All right. If you know Minan Yu, say the word for medicine all by itself. 一个音节 Good. Everybody louder in in Minan Minan Yu. The word for medicine. Yo. All right. I want you to listen to two versions, and I wanted you to tell me if you like one better than the other. Okay. One is yo. One is yo. You like the first one or the second one? Some of you think they're okay, so that tells you that Minan Yu 现在在变，因为原先应该怎么念？有，有，有没有后面的一个突然断掉的声音 ？For some of you， 有没有关系 ？Right？ 那个表示已经变了，因为它本来是个 K， 原先更早是 Y，K， 广东话是 Y， 绝对有个 K 在后面。米安语失去了这个 k， 这个 k 变成一个喉色音，没有 k， 它只有声音突然断掉了，声带那边把它切掉了。有，有，可是年轻人现在很多年有没有关系，加油。后面有字的话 ，then it's gone。For example， 加个 a、啊、的话怎么念？有啊，那个喉色音没有了，那是米南语的一个内部的一个规则，所以应该是有。有啊，有，有啊，这是理论。可是很多人单独一个音节也是念有 ，Is that right？ 有，后面没有没有喉舌音。So pay attention to that. When you hear people or when you yourself are speaking Minan Yu， 要开始注意词尾。PTK 跟有没有喉舌音？有，跟有，有，有。How about 吃饭的吃怎么说？ It should be jia. Is that right? Jia. But some people, I've heard this in many years ago already. Wa bo ai jia. Wo ting guo yo ha. This 表示后面那个喉舌音开始消失。当你孩子这一代的时候，可能已经没有了。So 应该是假，假崩，假，假断掉了。憋气有没有？假。But a lot of people wa bo ai jia. 变了。All right, the whole yeah. Okay, that's a good point, and I hadn't thought of that. 后面加一个啊的话，有点像有啊，这样子就消失了。That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that one. That's a good point. 可是同时，好像也开始消失，还是有这个现象。But thank you for telling me that. 比较婉转就没有那么直啊。Uh, I'm starved. Give me some food, right? 啊、uh, ，我不想吃啊， uh, 就不要吃了啊， uh, 就很有,有点太直。Okay, yeah. Okay. In any case, it seems to 有个趋势已经开始消失了。The reason I brought it up is because we need to know about glottal stops. 英文有一个子音常常会变成 glottal stop， 就是哪个子音 ？It's in this word. 英文是哪个子音常常会变成 glottal stop？ T， T 是很嚣张，它就像美国一样，我行我素，我爱怎么样，别人只好接受。它很像飙车族。What happens？ 有飙车族的话，你会跟他比吗？你会不会跟他赛车 ？Will you, Will you say？ 哎，这是我的线啊，你要到那边去啊 ？Are you gonna argue with him？ No， 你会怎么样？你闪开，对不对？飙车族，我们一点办法都没有。They can do whatever they want because they're going too fast and it's dangerous. Well, that's what T does. 他是最嚣张的，他爱怎么样他就怎么样。T 的变化特别多。And one of the main changes that T makes is it turns to a glottal stop. 他常常会变成 glottal stop， 尤其是在别的子音之前。For example, H I T 怎么念 ？Hit, hit your T, right? 打我怎么说？ Okay, listen carefully. Don't talk now. Just listen. Hit, hit me. Hit, hit me. Hit, hit. So, 这没有点到 It's not a T anymore. It's a glottal stop. So, hit, 
hit me t 再接一个嗯子音开头的音节的话 ，t 往往会变成一个喉舌音。然后 important 最后那个母音不见了，所以它就等于是个 n 在它的后面，所以那个 t 是个喉舌音，不能略过了，不能跳过去。So listen carefully. Don't say important. Important r 到 n 没有。Import. 它 t 是变喉舌音，它 t 不见了，可是有个喉舌音来顶它，不可以完全当做没有子音。So listen carefully. Important. 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 同时，现在很多年轻人开始说 important 也有，我不喜欢。But some people are saying it. But important. Don't say important. Important. Okay. 我花这个时间 ，OK， 后面会省时间 ，and it will also increase your awareness. Start paying attention to how people say the word important. Okay. How do people say it? Chinese or Taiwanese, and native speakers or Europeans, other people. Notice how they say it, and also remember Minan Yu. 那个词尾的那个舌音，你要开始注意 ，OK？ 嗯、mm, ，It is important. 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 OK. Important. 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 别气。Important. Important. 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 Yeah. Important. Just important. Now、mm. important. Important. That's good.、Yeah. To remember, uh, that they show only two dimensions. The vocal tract is a tube. And the positions of the sides of the tongue may be very different from the position of the center. All right, pay attention to this because when we're looking at these drawings, they're very easy to draw and pretty easy to understand, but they only show us 一个剖面，只有两度空间。What's missing? 有些东西是圆的，凸出来的。然后呢，有时候是不对称，不对称。偏一边，我们这里看不看不出来。So these drawings also introduce distortion. Keep in mind, 有些东西会看不到，因为它少了第三度空间。Okay.、Mm -hmm. In saying "sigh," for example, there is a deep hollow in the center of the tongue. A deep hollow. A deep hollow. Not deep. Deep. Deep.、Mm -hmm. Deep hollow in the center of the tongue. That is not. Uh, not present when saying "shy." All right, let's pay attention to this.、Um, when we are saying "sigh," compare it to "shy." Feel what your tongue is doing. Sigh 的时候应该有一个直的凹槽 Sigh, 就是你的舌头两边会翘起来 Sigh 有没有？舌头的两边会这样子翘起来，产生中间一条沟，有没有？ Now say shy. He 比较没有那条沟 Sigh 有 shy 比较没有 shy shy. Okay. We cannot represent this mm -mm, difference. 有一样 cannot cannot 跟 important 一样 We cannot、mm -hmm. represent this difference in a two-dimensional diagram. That shows just that the, shows. 你这个是非常 consistent 的一个问题 So put it in your notes. Watch for 词尾的 t. 词尾的 t 念喉舌音 ，watch that. Okay, you're doing it extremely consistently.、Uh, we cannot represent this difference in a two-dimensional diagram that shows just the midline of the tongue. Midline, your n. Midline. Uh huh. Midline of midline. the. Midline. Midline. 不是 mid. Midline. Midline. We'll we'll work on it another time. Okay, midline of the tongue, a so-called mid sagittal view. Sagittal. Sagittal. Okay, sagittal. Actually, it, it's related to Sagittarius. 跟箭头有关，就是一个剖面图，这样子的一个剖面图，这样子来剖开来。So mid sagittal view, 你看不到舌头的那个凹槽，画不出来，少少了内度空间。We will be relying on mid sagittal diagrams of the vocal organs to a considerable extent in this book, but we should、mm -hmm. never. But, but yeah. But we should never let this simplified view become the sole basis for a conceptualization of speech sounds. Very good. Conceptualization is more British and American. It's usually conceptualization. 对 conceptualization 比较偏向英式 All right. So when you are reading, and I keep correcting you on something. 比方说你的 the 的问题啊，你的词尾的 t 的问题 Usually, it's something that you do all the time. 
不是这一次偶然发生的 ，it's systematic. So please keep in mind. First of all, congratulations to all of you for being so brave for doing this on camera. I mean that takes a lot of yong chi, and 一种奉献的心理 because these things are things that Taiwanese do all the time. 每个人有肯肯定有他个人的最最喜爱的某一个错误，啊，特别偏爱的某一个错误。可是呢 ，when we take the entirety of them， 全部一个一个来讲的话，我们得到的就是一个台式英语的一个缩影。All right, we get a picture of Taiwan English, and for the people who bother to look at this video， they're going to learn a lot about Taiwan English， which is valuable， I think for education in Taiwan for everybody。你的英文要讲得更好 ，the first thing you need is awareness。你必须要知道你自己在干嘛。We've taken the first few steps by feeling what our tongue does. What's the difference between sigh and shy, etc.? Okay, so remember that these are gifts. If I point something out, 这是我送给你的礼物，记下来。That's your personal thing to work on. Okay, go on. Uh, Julia. In order to form. 呃，不是 in 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 n 点的 n. Everybody also typical Taiwan English. 词尾的 n 这篇我还没写。很快要写，不是应应该的应是 n 点的 n in order， 把 n 连到 order 的前面去，因为英文有连音。母音开头的字 ，write this in your rules。母音开头的字，它通常把前面的字的最后一个音，逗到它的前面，当做它的第一个音。So instead of saying in order to， we say in order。那样的话，你不容易把那个 n 不小心念成 in order， 应该的 in 不对 ，n 点的 n 才对。In order to， this is extremely common in Taiwan English. Everyone pay attention. 那个 n n 的问题是非常大，跟那个 name 差不多一样严重。Okay, everybody. In order to. In order to. In order to. Okay, Julie, you start next time. 下次是你。All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much. We'll see you on Wednesday. Don't forget to mail me. Your file in one file, please. MP3 to Feather Mountain. We'll see you on Wednesday.